if we can't win or we don't see some some really obvious goal or something being met um, at the end of all of it, kind of like going to a job and clocking in and getting a paycheck, that kind of thing, like I'm not going to do it unless I get some, some obvious mater- yep. material benefit from it, then there's no point in engaging in these massive sustained protests over long periods of time. Um, yes. And I don't think people just appreciate the, I, I'm overgeneralizing, of course, but they don't just appreciate the process itself. And that, you know, maybe we should do it just because it is a spit in the face to the rich and the politicians. Is that not enough of a reason to go out and do it? You know, I, I almost feel like that should be, there has to be that deep rage and anger to drive us towards action. And maybe from there we can figure out something else and work it out. Um, I, I don't know. That's just my feeling, but uh, no. yeah. Um, so I, I did read that article. Okay. Um, and okay. I had a very similar reaction to it. I kind of felt like she was taking, I mean, and this is what Americans who cover foreign protest movements do. You know, she's taking a overall sentiment and driving it through an American cultural lens and translating it out the other side, Right. And, you know, that word hope is, is, I mean, I use it myself, but it's kind of a problematic word. You know? And, and, and very much, I think what you just said, you know, Americans sort of expect this, this, this transactional na- nature, right? We're a very competitive society. We don't want to try anything if we don't think we're going to win. Um, and we really don't understand, you know, and again, this is where we have a very short history and, there aren't many times in American history that you've seen a mass movement that was just a fuck you mm. where, you know, and of course the other piece you're saying, you know, of course not everyone thinks that way. I mean, did everyone in, in May 68 in France think that they were going to overthrow the French government? Of course not. Some of them were just really fucking pissed off and needed to express an outlet. Now, you know, yes, there, there was a contingent that, that wanted to, to overturn it. Um, but I think, you know, if, if you had done an exit poll <laughs> on what people's expectations were, you know, I, th- I think you would have gotten a very similar mentality to what those Hong Kong protesters are saying. You know, in times of desperation, you do what you have to do because otherwise you're just sitting at home. You know, it's a whole, you know, you, you read, uh, uh, you know, you look at World War II, for example, you know, you look at resistance movements that knew full well they weren't going to win. You know, yeah. <laughs> you look at the, the resistance of the Warsaw Ghetto, they knew they were outnumbered. It wasn't necessarily about hope versus lack, at ho- lack of hope. It's like, if we're going to be screwed anyway, we might as well spit them in the fucking face. And, and well, yeah, and I, I think Americans just don't, they don't see that as a, a goal in and of itself. And they don't understand the long-term repercussions that that can have on the legitimacy of any given government. And, you know, I think that part of this goes to, I think, a bigger piece where, and I think, you know, I tend to forget it myself, so I'm going to say it out loud to remind myself, you know, the American government's the longest functioning government in the world. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Jesus, (laughs) that's true. (laughs) They've seen governments rise and fall. They know it can happen. It, it happens very quickly often. It happens very easy, right? What's going on in Chile right now? They remember 73, right? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> France in 68, that government was only 10 years old. The Fifth Republic was initiated in 58. Mm. So, you know, and before then, you know, that was Vichy. And before then, when they saw the fall of the Fourth Republic right before the war, you know, like they were able to see, you know, they, they had in their memory, in their actual tangible memory, what it means for governments to fall. And sometimes all it takes is, is for them to look like asses, for them to look so illegitimate that, you know, they, they can't face the music anymore. And, and someone decides, okay, this car is a lemon. Maybe we should like, you know, find a new model, but the American government, you know, it is, it is the oldest They're They're working with the oldest blueprints of any country in the world. It is, is the longest running without interruption government that exists of any sort whatsoever. Um, and it's deeply, deeply fetishized, you know, you look at the fetishization of the founding fathers. Again, you look like, you know, this is the greatest structure on earth. This is the greatest government on earth. Right. And I always say, you know, I mean, what I always throw out to people that they never think of, I would say, how many other governments in the world are based on the American government? Mm-hmm. I can't think of any. Yeah. Because the answer is zero. Mm. Because there is 
no other country in the world that looked at the American government and said, that's how we should structure it right there. Yeah. There's a reason for that because it's a deeply, deeply, deeply flawed model. And it's really hard, partially because Americans just don't understand how, I mean, I love listening to like Americans try to like explain how like the British government works or the French government. They have no idea. They can't think they can't like explain their way out of a paper bag when it comes to like talking about any parliamentary system, any semi-parliamentary system. They, they don't know anything but their own as opposed to the average person over here. I mean, French people often know how the American government works better than Americans do. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So know why it doesn't work. And so, you know, part of that whole, like, they don't want to do anything unless they'll succeed is because the Americans cannot conceive the idea of their government falling because it's been in place since the American Revolution. And they have this kind of idea that it's, it's going to be in place forever where, you know, like Rome lasted a long time, too, but it fell in the end. And the material conditions that led to the fall of Rome or, you know, we could like play a comparison game here and it gets kind of creepy. Yeah. With what's going on, now, especially the, you know the level of corruption. I was just reading something today. It was uh, I forget some independent institute did a measurement of, you know, the the corruption index of all the countries that they consider to be industrialized. The United States is, is 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 number one. We are considered the most corrupt democracy in the world. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, that can only hold for so long. And, and I think, you know, the average American, it's that combination of that fetishization and just this being all they've ever known. And they can't conceive what it would be like to, to throw out the blueprints and start anew. Um, you know, they can imagine like an Independence Day sci-fi fucking <laughs> scenario <laughs> before they can imagine. <laughs> The idea of, you know, we, we just we throw out this president, vice president, Senate House model and maybe look at, you know, how other countries do things. And may, maybe we should try to start something a little a little different. Right. They, they cannot conceive of that. Whereas every other country that you see this stuff going on, they're dealing with a much more, you know, sh- short term um, understanding, you know, in, in terms of the institutional memory. Of, of how government, you know, I always, you know, uh, the American Revolution and the French Revolution were only 10 years apart, but the French are on their fifth republic and the Americans are still working on their first. Yeah. And, you know, this is a country that has seen the, the fall of, of four republics and two empires in only a little over 200 years. So it's much easier to have the mentality that, you know, even maybe we're not, not going to win our goal. We're going out there with a the stated goal. We might not win our goal. But even if you don't win your goal, that mass showing that, that you know, it's, 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 the, it's the people's equivalent of a no confidence vote, right? Which is something that exists in most other governments as well that doesn't exist in the American government. Um, and, and just, you know, the longstanding effect that just showing such mass disapproval can have on the legitimacy of your institution. You know, and, and far too many Americans, I think, just think their government is legitimate. Like guys, it's fucking. It's owned by corporations. Like, what? What is it? What is it here that you really want to preserve? And I, I think they often they they can't actually explain that. Again, it's just this such deep indoctrination, that deep fetishization, that 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 just and that everyone carries, you know, except for maybe like the far, you know, the far left and the far right. And that's one thing they have in common. You know, they don't carry it. Far right just wants, you know, I mean, both sides kind of want no government, but they have very different concepts of what that is. But pretty much, you know, anyone who's going to go cast a vote, right? Yeah. (laughs) Just cannot envision overthrowing the American government, whereas they can see that in, in Chile. They can see, you know, they can see that in France. You know, they're not calling for impeachment. They're calling for an overthrow, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and I think Americans also, you know, part of that fetishization is just, you know, that checks and balance system and how strong that checks and balance system is and how that checks and balance, that's going to save, you know, and look at the amount of people who think that impeachment's going to save us and want to cry. 